Hi friends, my name is Amber and this is a Lovely Yarn Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am coming to you on Tuesday, November 28th, and it is a very windy, cold, blustery, snowy day here in western Pennsylvania. Ah, yes, it is. It's not our first snow of the year, but um, and it's not even laying really. There's just like a dusting, but we're getting snow. So it's cold. So it's definitely one of those days where I'm just craving all the cozy stuff. So um, I wanted to come to you guys one more time before December 1st because December 1st means the start of Vlogmas, which I will be participating in again this year. And I'm going to talk about that at the end. Okay. We'll get into the details of that at the end. For now, I want to talk about my knitting projects and I have quite a few of them because I'm working on some smaller things um, as well as my larger projects that I've been working on. So let's just jump right into that. I do want to say um, thank you for all of your lovely comments and likes and views on my last special episode which was the Scrappy Advent episode. If you have not seen that and you're interested in projects, projects that feature like mini skeins or advent calendar yarns. I gathered up a list of 42 of such projects and I did a little bit of a um, rundown of those on my last episode, which I aired, I think it was like eight days ago. I will put a link to that down below if you want to check that out. And, um, Many of you had asked about the sweater that I was wearing and I put in the notes. I, I wrote some information in the notes, but I'm, I'm sure that not everybody saw that. That was actually not a hand knit sweater. I got that second hand. It has, when I looked at the tag, it's, it says it's from Maurice's. So that is a store here in America, a women's clothing store. Um, but I had purchased it second hand actually. So it's one of... I have a couple of <laughs> store-bought color work type sweaters that I have just bought because I actually, I think I bought one new, but it was on, it was like on a clearance rack. And then this one is, um, one that I bought secondhand. So there's no pattern for that. Sorry that I can't point you in the direction of a pattern for that sweater. It is a very beautiful sweater. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So I want to show you my first finished object. I have a couple and then I have some whips, but my first finished object is, okay, so I did a special episode. I've been doing lots of special episodes. I did one recently on um, worsted weight hats because I was looking for a hat pattern for a new hat for a very specific yarn that I had purchased from Flower Hill Fleeces. Um, it was one of her, it was a uh, worsted weight farm yarn of hers. I will link her shop down below and I will link to that yarn. I, if it's still in, in stock, it was last time I filmed. So I will get, leave that all down below. But, um, I did an episode because I had spent some time researching for the perfect hat for this yarn. And this is, um, so it's a, s a single ply. It's a worsted, but I think it's, there are some, it's, kind of thick and thin, not like hand spun, but there is some of that variation to it. Um, anyway, so I did that whole episode, which I guess I can also link that down below. It wasn't, I posted that maybe a few weeks ago. Anyway, I had decided that I was going to knit the towards, towards North hat by Asita Krebs. Yeah. Asita Krebs. And, um, I don't know. I had you guys, a lot of, a lot of you had suggested the antler toque, which was one of the featured patterns. And I had actually really thought about that one as well. But then I, something about this yarn just made me want to knit the towards, towards North hat. So, um, here it is. And I did do some things a little bit differently than what the pattern stated, but let me show you. We got some sun. The sun's out. It's, it's been like snow squalls and then the sun comes out and then snow squalls and then the sun. We're currently in like a small patch of sun, but, um, yes. Yeah, so 
The way this hat is knit is you start, it's knit from the brim up. And so I knit the brim, but then I realized that I, no, I didn't realize, I know this about myself, but I thought I want a really thick brim because I go out and walk. Like I live in Pennsylvania. I need I need to dress warm and I'm not going to, I have to, I just go out. It's part of my, like, it's just part of my daily routine. I go outside and I walk, um, almost every day. And so for me, I need really warm pieces in the winter. And so to do a single brim, even though this is a very nice, warm, wooly yarn, I think it's, it's mostly, oh gosh. I should have written the content down, but uh, again, I'll link it down below. It has alpaca and then maybe uh, Icelandic. I can't remember. Um, but you know, like my ears get cold. And so I decided to knit the brim portion double what the pattern called for. And then what I ended up doing is, um, inside I knitted it down. So, so I knit the brim double, double the length of what I wanted it. And then I folded it up in and I knitted it down to, um, just the fabric inside. And then I went and did this braid portion, which is called a vehicle brain, brain, <laughs> vehicle braid. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So I did that and then I knit the the body and the crown of the hat. And um, this is a free pattern, by the way. I think, you know, all of the, no, I know all of the hats in that episode were free patterns. Um, so this is a free pattern. It is beautiful. I really enjoyed knitting it. I, I think I'm going to knit another one. The only thing I'm a little disappointed in is when I when I flipped the brim inside out and stitched and knitted it down, like I didn't stitch it. I actually knitted it down. Um, I didn't, I wasn't careful to line up the vertical lines of the brim. And so if you can see it kind of slants, kind of slants a bit. Um, but it, that's really not that big of a deal, but let me try it on for you. The other thing I did that was a little bit different is I just made this longer. I made the head of the, um, hat longer than the pattern said. So let me just put this on and okay. So see, you can see what I'm talking about here. I think when I put it on, but again, it's, that's really, that's not a big deal, right? I don't know that anybody's going to pay attention to that. And, um, oh, and I made the crown decrease section. I did that a little bit longer too, because I wanted to make sure that the hat was nice and long, like that it covered my entire ear. And after I was almost done with the decrease section, I started to doubt that I had knit this portion long enough, even though I had knit it longer than what the pattern had said. So I just, I don't even remember the exact thing I did on that. Um, but I just maybe did a couple of extra rounds in the decrease and yeah, cause that sometimes happens with me. I have multiple hats that I've knitted that I have knitted according to the pattern and then they're not long enough and then my ears don't stay covered. And I do have like my hair, I think also holds the hat up off my head a bit, bit, but yeah, this is a nice uh, fit and it's nice and snug. I love a snug, snugly fitting hat. So, um, yeah, just perfect hat. Oh, it feels good. I'm actually really cold today, <laughs> which is so out of the norm for me anymore. I'm usually hot, but I think it's just cause I was out a lot today and the wind is just intense and I'm just like, Oh, so this actually feels nice and toasty on. Um, but yeah, love this pattern. I actually have a skein of peace fleece worsted that I think would make, um, <clears throat> a really pretty hat, like make, I want to make this pattern out of that yarn again. And, um, I just really enjoyed this. It was easy. It was quick. It, it's been so nice. Like I said, I've been doing a couple of smaller, quicker projects 
and uh, that is coming like on the trail of many sweaters. I've been doing a lot of sweater knitting and I, it's so nice to just finish something so quickly, like a worsted weight hat. So moving on, I want to show you my next finished object. Oh, and let me show you if, in case you would decide to knit this hat, um, I should have weighed this, but this is what I have left from that skein of yarn. And I think there, again, I, I might, I mentioned this in my uh, last episode, but I misplaced the ball band for this. So I can't remember the yardage in this skein of yarn, but I had plenty and that was even doing an extra long brim and doing the body longer than the pattern. Okay. So next thing I want to talk about is super cute, perfect for this time of year and something that I have been wanting um, to make for a while. So Laura Penrose uh, recently put a test call, test knit call out on her Instagram account for a hot water bottle cover. And I saw it and I was like, I really would love to test knit that. So I applied and I, I got into the test knit and, um, it was a very short turnaround. It was like a, I think maybe a two week turnaround. And so I was, I was like, mm, is that smart? Because, you know, our, in here in America, we have Thanksgiving coming up and I, I want to get that cardigan that I will talk about here in a minute. I wanted to get that finished. And so I was just, I kind of like, eh, but then I'm like, but Amber, this is so cute. And you've been wanting to knit a hot water bottle cover. You've just been putting it off. And so I was like, just apply and just go for it. And I'm so glad I did. So let me show you mine. This is called the Maxine hot water bottle cover. And it is so cute. Um, a little backstory. I actually take a hot water bottle to bed with me almost every night in the late fall and through the winter. And I know that maybe doesn't make sense when I complain about how it's hard for me to wear sweaters, pull like pullovers because I run hot now, but something about when I first go to bed tonight, I'm usually freezing and then I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I will be hot. So I like to just warm up a kettle <laughs> and take my hot water bottle to bed with me. And I've, I've done that for years. So even before I was, I was dealing with all like the perimenopausal stuff, I was taking a hot water bottle to bed with me. Um, but I have, so I just have this like blue, uh, one, it came with a blue like, cable knitted acrylic cover that I've used for the last year, maybe. Cause I, I actually used my first one so much that it deteriorated to the point where I had to get rid of it. But this is my second one. Um, and the, it was fine, but it wasn't, it was like this bright blue. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't super cozy cause it was acrylic and I really just wanted to make a woolly one. And so this is it. And I love it so much. I have used it already. I was going to wait. I like to usually, I usually wait until after I have filmed a podcast to wear a new knitted item just because I want it to be all nice and neat and, you know, just those things. But I, sorry, I had to um, dismiss an alarm that came up, but I have been using this and I have to say it keeps my hot water bottle warmer, longer. I woke up this morning and my, my, the water was still warm. It wasn't like hot, but it was still warm. So it's the wool is doing a really good job at insulating it. Um, and yeah, it's just, I chose to do, sorry about this on there, but her pattern, which is supposed to be released this week has uh color work. It's so it's color work and it has charts for both six color color work, which is what I chose to test. And then it also has an option for three colors. So you can do either one. And um, both instructions are included for that. I feel like this pattern, like there was, it was so easy to test knit. I had, I mean, the test knit deadline, I did, I had it done several days before the test knit deadline. 
So, um, and it was just so fun. It was so fun because you know I love color work. <laughs> I love color work and on a small scale. And I'm just like, this would be the perfect gift. Just, you know, get on Amazon or go to your local pharmacy or wherever you can buy a hot water bottle and buy one and then knit a cover for it and give it to somebody for a Christmas gift. I just think like that is such, it would make such an awesome Christmas gift. And I like the little folded down, um, what would you call this? Like the little collar, <laughs> but she did an excellent job designing this and I'm going to be knitting another one. So let's talk about the yarn I used. I actually used all scraps because I knew I needed to use what I had. This pattern is written for a DK weight yarn, but most of the yarn I used was a sport weight. So when I checked gauge, I was actually like a half of a stitch. I think I had, I think the gauge was 20, Oh, what was it? Let me see. Let me, I, I wrote it in my notes. Let me see here. I think I wrote that down in my notes. Um, yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't. But anyway, whatever the gauge was, I had half of a stitch extra, which means my gauge worked up just like a hair, just a smidgen smaller. And so I, I was using, I was testing, test knitting it with, um, sport weight yarn and not the DK, but I thought I'm going to go with it because it's so close. It is so close. And I used the recommended needles, which was, yeah, the size six. And I actually learned something new. Oh wait, I need to stay on task. Stay on track, Amber. Let's talk about the yarn. Okay. So all of this yarn, except for this blue color is Cascade 220 Sport. And so the, the bad thing about this is that I no longer know the color names because the ball bands are long gone. Okay. So I can't give you the names, but I can tell you the brand. And, um, this was a 50 gram skein. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I had used, this is 10 grams. So I used 40 grams. So this is, again, you're not using like massive amounts of yarn for this either, which is another reason why it makes a great hand knit for a friend or a family member for Christmas. So yeah, this is what I had left of the main color. And then I just used every other color I used was 10 grams and under. Okay. So like, I think for the, the yellow, which only has a little bit here and here, I used about a gram and then the pink I used 10 grams. So that was the most one. That was the one I used the most of the contrast colors. The blue was nine grams. Like everything was such a small amount. The blue was Rowan felted tweed, it, which is a DK. It is listed as a DK weight yarn. So that is the only one that wasn't a Cascade 220 sport, but really love it. Had a really great time test knitting this. I um, really appreciated that Laura included me in that because this was super fun, especially if you're a color work lover and I will be making more of these. Uh, she was originally supposed to release this pattern the beginning of December, but she, because all the test netters got done early, um, she, I think she's going to be releasing it. If I read correctly on Instagram this week, she will be releasing this pattern this week. So keep your eyes out for this. Oh, and I know what I want to say. So I did the Judy's magic cast on for the very first time. This is my cast on edge. I had never done that before. Cause I'm not, a, I think that's what you use a lot for toe up socks and I'm not a toe up sock knitter. So yeah, it, it was not hard. I actually, I was like, this is amazing. Like you can't even tell that's where I cast it on. So if you've never done the Judy's magic cast on before, try it knit this pattern, try it. It was such a fun skill to learn. And I feel like it's such a useful thing to know as well. Okay. So let me see, do I have anything else? No, no, nothing else to say about that other than loved it. So glad I could help out with test knitting that. And I, I love it. It's such a cozy, it's so cozy, so cozy to snuggle up to. Okay. Um, I want to talk about just a few pairs of socks and then I want to get to my Gloam cardigan <laughs> here in a second, but let me go. I have 
three pairs of socks I'm working on right now and they're all Christmas gifts. So, um, I, th I think I showed you guys this one last time. I'm not even sure that I have worked on this since then, but this is mid-century stripes by Peyton's Croy with just the, like an off-white Peyton's Croy sock. And I've only got the first one done of this. So I'm going to be knitting another one. And this is like a Peyton's Croy. You guys, I've said this so many times, but in case you're new, uh, I knit the Peyton's Croy sock. It's listed as a, like a number one weight, but it's definitely more of a sport weight. And so I knit it on a size US two needle and I cast on like 56 stitches where I normally for my foot, which I'm a US size eight foot, um, I would usually cast on 60 stitches on a size zero needle for fingering weight yarn. I do 56 stitches on a US two for this Peyton's Croy. Okay. So that's that one. I was working on a pair of prayer socks last time. I actually got those completed. I think I forgot to take a picture. They turned out really cute. I sent them off to the recipient a couple of weeks ago. She has received those and really loved them. So I'm really happy about that. I love when I can bless other people. For those of you who do like prayer knitting, I, a lot of people think of prayer shawls as the way to go, which I do prayer shawls as well. Um, we have a prayer shawl ministry at our church that I participate in, but not everybody is a shawl wearer. And so socks can be, you know, pretty practical, right? Um, almost everyone wears socks, at least I think so. And so I, I like to knit pair of socks. Okay, next we have a pair of shorties and I have one completed. I'm sorry, again, this is some sort of just like commercial yarn that was left over from a pair of, of regular like taller socks that I had knit a couple of years ago. I just, all of my commer commercial fingering weight yarn I throw into a bag and then every now and then I'll pull it out and I almost always have enough to knit a pair of shorties. Just have to use like a contrast. So I did a contrast at the top there and then I'm doing a contrast toe. And um, yeah, I got, so I got that one done. And then I have just a little bit of the second one done. And so this one, I, I like I said, I knit, um, U.S. size zero needles, cast it on 60 stitches, and I knit eight rounds of ribbing. Let's go back here. Eight rounds of ribbing, and then I knit six rounds of stockinette before I did the hill flap, the gusset, and then the foot. So, yes. Um, and then this is all I got going over here. Just that much right there. So. That is all for those. I'm gonna go through these socks pretty fast because they're, there's not a whole lot to say about them. And then this next pair, I've been working through like a crazy lady. I literally just started these two days ago and look at how much I have done. I do have the sock band for this. This was actually sent to me by one of you lovely viewers. And this is the Regia uh, line by Arnie and, Car or the Arnie and Carlos line of the Regia. And it is, uh, it doesn't have a name for the color, the colorway. So it just has a number, which I will put down below in case you're interested and want to see if you can find this. But, um, yeah, I love the, I love these commercially dyed self-striping with the patterns. There we go. The sun went behind the clouds so I can show you a little closer. So again, these are a Christmas gift. I'm, I'm, I'm like Christmas gift knitting like a crazy person right now because I'm actually really proud of myself. Normally I don't start it until December because I normally am not in the mood to think about anything Christmas until like December. <laughs> and I was just like, this is so stressful. Every year I do that. I feel like this was so stressful. Why didn't you start earlier? So I started way earlier this year and it's so, I feel so good. I feel so good about it. And yeah it's, it's good. It's good. But this is going to be knitted for a mill. And so I cast on, I use size one and a half needles and I cast it on 60, um, because this particular person likes the sock a little snugger. So this will be a nice, um, I feel like this will be really good. It's definitely going to fit. 
and I did a longer ribbing than I normally do. So I did 20 rounds of ribbing before I started on the leg of this sock. But yeah, again, not a whole lot of excitement here. It's just a standard vanilla sock pattern. Just really super easy, makes good car knitting, movie knitting, church knitting, you know, all the above where you like orthodontist appointment knittings is what I was doing earlier <laughs> with that. Okay. One whip left to talk about before I talk about vlogmas and some advent stuff and oh, hold on. I'll be right back. Okay. I left the back panel across the bedroom, so I had to go get it. Okay, so my goal for the Glome cardigan by, that's a pattern by um, Boyland Knitworks, Caitlin Hunter. My goal was to have that done for Thanksgiving. That did not happen. That mostly did not happen because I test knitted the hot water bottle cover, but that's okay. I was totally okay with that. That was a decision I had made. And um, I did get a lot done with it though. So I have this whole back panel which has already been blocked. Okay, so that's my back panel. And then I have both side panels done, which have also already been blocked. And these, I'm going to block this whole cardigan again once I have it done because I was, I ran out of blocking little, um, the little blocking things because I was blocking all three pieces at one time. But yeah, so this is all done. So. The, let me see how this would go like this yeah and then this across the back so the next step for me in this is to seam it all together I was going to take try to take a shortcut and seam this without blocking and I sat down to do it and I thought this is not going to go well because you know, the side seam was all curling in and under. And I thought, I know, I was like, I know I want to get this seam together. I know I want to get moving on this project. I know if I stop to block it, it's going to slow it down. But I also know that it's going to be hard to seam this sweater because you're seaming the shoulders and you're seaming, you're leaving an armhole and then you're seaming the side. And so I knew that if I didn't have it nicely blocked, it was going to be harder. And I'm not a big fan of the whole process of seaming just because it's like not knitting. It's part of the process. But those of us who don't really enjoy the finishing processes will under, you know, you guys will understand that, but it's an important part of the process and I wanted to do it right. And I wanted it to look nice. So now that I have my three pieces blocked, I'm going to go ahead and seam this together. Now this is where I need your help because I have only done several sweaters that have been seamed. And so I'm not super, I wouldn't, I would not say I'm like a great seamer. Is that even a word? <laughs> Do you know, I need, so I need to research what is the best way to seam together pieces. Um, like what's the best stitch? What is the best way to piece it together. Just throw out some advice for me here and you don't even have to tell me how to do it. Just if there's like a certain type, like there, what is there? Mattress stitch, whip stitch. Like if there's a way that looks neat and you guys prefer, just throw it out there in the comments and I will, um, look it up myself. Like I'll figure out how to do it. I just, yeah. I just would like any advice or input on that on the best way to do it. So once I get these seamed together, then I will go and I will pick up stitches for the armholes at the armholes and I will make the sleeves, which they're just like, they're just like to here. I'll pop a picture in of the Glome cardigan uh, because I don't have the pattern right here to show you, but that, that way you'll know it's like an oversized cardigan and the sleeves come to about here on it. It is a drop shoulder as well. It's going to be like more of a drop. It's going to, you know, it's like a very relaxed looking cardigan. And then I will go back and you do the, the hem, like the ribbing on the hem the whole way around. So I'm close to being done. The sleeves are going to go fast. 
And I actually really enjoyed doing this textured portion. That is all just knits and pearls to give you that texture. And I think it's really beautiful. And I like this that this yarn really showcased it. I think you can see the texture really nicely with this particular yarn. Oh, and I should tell you that this yarn, what is this yarn? I should tell you that, right? This yarn is Patagonia. It's Juniper Moon Farm Patagonia Organic Merino. And this is the acorn colorway. So I have, I bought three skeins. I have this much left of my second skein and I have a whole nother third skein. So I'm definitely gonna have enough. When um, the pattern called for way more than what I ordered and I ordered less than what the pattern said I needed because I was reading all the project pages and I was noticing how many knitters said that they did not use near as much as the pattern called for. So this yarn is, how many yards is in this yarn? It's 382 yards and 100 grams. And I'm knitting a size two in this pattern. So yeah. And the size two is going to be, let me see here. What will a size two give me? It's, this sweater is meant to be worn with 15 to 20 inches of positive ease. And I'm typically not a, like, I don't like a ton of extra positive ease, but this, let me show you this little sketch so you can see what it's supposed to look like. See that? Okay. Um, so size two is going to be almost a 49 inch bust. So that's going to be way bigger than what I would normally knit. I almost knit the smallest size, which gives a 43 and a half bust finish size. But then I, again, after reading the project pages and looking, it's so hard, but like sometimes it's nice. It's actually often nice that you can get on Ravelry and you can look at everyone's project and you can look at, I love when people actually have pictures of them wearing the garment because then you can look at their body shape and size and you can kind of tell if it's similar to your body shape and size so that you can see oh if it looks like that on them then it's going to probably look similar to that on me so that's why I decided to go with a size two just by you know what I read and the pictures that I saw on Ravelry. Do I have anything else to say about that? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay so those are all of my active projects or currently um, or recently finished projects. So now let's talk about what is coming up here in several days. But first, let me take a sip of tea. My family and I had um, like really mild colds, weird stuff over Thanksgiving. Like the week of Thanksgiving and then through through the weekend and we're still I feel I mean it was like if you're gonna get a cold it was a good cold to get and as always I just like was pushing vitamins at everyone and myself <laughs> because I'm like Thanksgiving it's my favorite holiday we can't be sick but um and then my my husband ended up yeah it was just he ended up getting pink eye over the weekend and he had to go away. He had to go out of state for work. So he was like in urgent care Sunday morning and he's, he's doing much better with that, you know, but anyway, it was all, it all got taken care of. But because of that, I still like when I, I feel like when I talk a lot, I start getting like a really dry throat. So I've got some really yummy turmeric ginger tea that I got at East Bihari, which is the coffee shop I used to work at. I stopped there this morning um, during my first time out today and I got myself. And I have this really handy um, travel mug that I've had for years and years. I bought it at Target. It's, it's I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's the Gaiam. I'm probably mispronouncing that. G-A-I-A-M, it's that brand. And this thing keeps liquids hot for hours. Like I bought this tea this morning at nine 30 
and it is still, it is still toasty warm. Like it's, can you see this? You probably can't see the steam. I can see the steam. So yeah, this, I don't know if this brand is still as good as it was back when I bought this thing. And I bought this thing on clearance too, which was an amazing find, I guess. Okay. So let's talk about, let's talk about Vlogmas. So hold on, let me adjust my light. Okay. So today is November 28th. Friday is December 1st, which means Vlogmas starts. And, um, I have done it for the last, I think just the last two years, right? I think so. And typically I film every day and put a video up by the end of that day. I think there may have been times where I've like when I know the one, the first year I did it, Brad and I were away. We went away for the weekend. So I waited until that we got home and then I put the whole, uh, weekend's worth of footage into one video and posted it. But this year I'm, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. I am setting out with the intention of filming and posting once a day, but I know that there are a couple of days that that is going to be extremely challenging because we are going to have guests and I never want to, I, I am not able or will I'm able, but I'm not willing to take time away from our guests in our home to edit a video because basically when you're doing vlogmas, for those of you podcasters who do it, you know, but it's a lot of work and time because you're filming all day <clears throat> and then you have to edit it at the end of the day and then you have to let it upload and all that stuff. So I enjoy doing it. I really do enjoy doing it. I find it really, it's a good practice for me to be mindful of the season and it just... I don't know. It's, it's a good thing for me to do, but I know it's not a good thing for me to be taking time away from guests. So I have to see how it's going to work out with all of that. So we're just, I'm just going to go into it in a very organic matter with the, the manner, sorry, with the plan of filming every day, but do know there are going to be days I'm not going to be posting every day. That's probably a good way to say it. Like I may have to smush a few days together depending on our family schedule. Um, and that's just, I have, I have to do it that way this year. <clears throat> so, but looking forward to that and I don't know what all we're going to be doing. We, we usually try to have a really fun December and, um, I do have some things lined up already. I have some ornaments like handmade ornaments that I want to make. And, um, of course we want to go do some things. We like to, I really like to go to, into the city, which our closest p city is Pittsburgh. It's like 45, 50 minutes from us. And I just, I, there's something about the city at Christmas time. Uh, I think that goes back to when I was young, my aunt and uncle would always come back from Boston to my grandparents farm and they would take myself and my sisters to Pittsburgh and we would go look at Macy's windows because they don't, is there even a Macy's in Pittsburgh anymore? Downtown Pittsburgh? I don't think there is, but there used to be one right in downtown and they had all these windows and they would just make them look so beautiful for Christmas. And that was just so much fun. I have such good memories. And then on our way home, we would always drive like back roads to look at the, the lights on the houses and stuff. So I, I really think that my love for the, a city at Christmas comes from that. <laughs> um, so I do, we do want to do some things in there. We normally go into a, like a German Christmas market they have there. Actually, it's, it's not just a German Christmas market. It's, um, there's all kinds of different little stalls and stuff there from different, that represent different countries. Um, yeah, there's a, a big tree down there. There's a Phipps Conservatory, which they do a, a Christmas light show. And so we have a membership at Phipps. So we'll probably go do that. I don't know. We'll see what we get into. I'm excited to share it with you guys. And then I also did an advent, an advent yarn swap with uh, Laura from Back Porch Fiber Co. and Annie of Knits and Burls. And we sent 12 mini skeins each. No. 
24 total, but like I sent 12 to Annie and 12 to Laura and then she did, they, they both did the same. So I have 24 days plus, you know, we both, we all did something for Christmas too. And Laura, Laura has project bags, little, nothing like this size. This she must've had done special for us, but she has a really, oh my gosh, I love, I think she used to just dye yarn. She doesn't really dye yarn anymore, but she makes the most gorgeous, minimalistic, um, wooden resin stitch markers. I have bought several off of her, so I'll link her shop down below. You can check it out, but she also sells like these little cute draw drawstring, uh, screen printed, uh, project bags. But anyway, she sent Annie and I one of these. So let me show you this thing is massive. This is my advent knitting bag. Is that not so stinking cute? It's so big. It's got a nice pocket here. It's like a heavy canvas. And then I have all of my um, packages from both Annie and Laura put in here so that I can just reach in each day. And then look, it's even got a zipper. It's so nice. So I'm really looking forward to that. Anyway, so I have that. And then... You guys, you guys are so generous. I have such generous viewers. Like I literally have such generous viewers. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. You make me feel so loved and cared for. But then Jennifer from Brazos Fiber Works. I hope I pronounced that right. Brazos. Brazos. Let me show you the, I should have asked her before I filmed this. Bra maybe it's, it might be Brazos. Let me show you her little thing. And then I'm going to show you this on the back. So you can see all of her contact information. And I'll link her shop down below as well. She messaged me on Instagram and asked if she could send me her, her, she's a yarn dyer. Should have said that. She's a yarn dyer. She asked me if she could send me, she asked me if she could send me her um, advent calendar, her 24 day advent calendar. And I was like, Wow. Yes. Thank you. I mean, thank you so much. So I also have that. This is like my first official advent calendar. Oops. So I have all that. I feel very spoiled. Thank you for spoiling me, Jennifer and Laura and Annie and all of you other like very lovely viewers, kind viewers. You're kind with your comments. You're kind with your, um, just encouraging words. So many of you have donated to my coffee. You've bought me coffee on my coffee account or several coffees. <laughs> um, and I really appreciate all of it, but I will be showing what I got in my advent kits during vlogmas. And so that's exciting. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm hoping we can just have a lot of fun together and I hope you guys enjoy it. I know that at the Vlogmas is not for everyone. That is perfectly fine. But for those of you that enjoy watching that, um, I hope you enjoy whatever I come up with this year. I've actually been rewatching mine from last year just to help myself get a bit inspired because it just, it came upon me so quickly. Does anyone else feel that way? Like it's all, bam, all of a sudden the holiday season is here and I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't prepared myself. So I, um, I'm working to get into the Christmas spirit and this weather today definitely has helped it, you know, having snow. So anyway, um, yeah, I think that's what I wanted to talk about today. So we will, um, you'll be seeing a lot of me in the month of December through my Vlogmas episodes if you choose to watch those. And I have something else exciting coming up in December that I'm going to share with you. I may do just a regular episode. I normally don't do a regular episode during the month of December because I'm filming so much with Vlogmas, but I may end up doing that because of this thing I want to share with you guys. Um, so we're, I'm just going to kind of play that by ear and see what happens with that. But that's all I got for you today. So I'm so glad I could get on here. I'm so glad I could get on here before, uh, the end of the month and do my last, potentially last, you know, regular episode. 
And again, all the links for everything that I talked about will be down below unless I forget something. And if I do, please feel free to reach out and I will try to rectify that. And thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful holiday season and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.